This is Barry and Eric again. Uh, we're going to give you a gun fact tonight. We're going to show you all the different types of uh, uh, sight pictures and different kind of sights. This is by far not everything, but we're going to give you a basic rundown of the different types of sights that, you can, that are available for you today. Uh, Eric is going to stand in on this gun facts because he knows a lot more about these other sites over here than I do. And I'm going to do the basics and he's going to take over with the red dots and so on and so forth. What this video mainly entails is we want to talk about proper sight picture. Now a lot of people tend to, you know, learn the incorrect way of sighting a given gun design or a, g a given type of sight and they'll confound those mistakes by practicing the wrong thing all over and over and over. And the problem is when you practice something that's incorrect over and over, it becomes a really hard habit to break. Correct. Uh, so Barry's gonna take you along some of these mm. sites and we're gonna show you kind of a general idea of how these sight pictures are supposed to look, Barry. Well, like Eric said, if you practice the wrong technique, it's like we did the condition reflex. You're always gonna go back to that. It takes a long time to break a bad habit. Right. So it's better to form a good habit in the beginning. Correct. Now, over here, We've got the basic Mauser style. This is what you find on a lot of your mill specs, your rear sight. Normally you're gonna have a pointed or pyramid shaped front sight. This is on the Jap 99 and the Mausers. Mm -hmm. uh, the Springfield is different, but this is your basic Mauser style of iron sight. Now down here we've got, this represents a single barrel of a shotgun or so on and so forth. It's just a plain brass bead mounted on top. Now a lot of your competition guns have two beads they have one on the end of the barrel and one halfway down the barrel. That way when you raise your gun up, you get you level it out with the beads. So you know you're lined up this way and this way. You're not gonna shoot high when you have two bead sights, one on the front of the barrel and one on the middle of the barrel. Now over here, on a, normally on a pistol, uh, this is the three dot sight system. You got three dots, your front sight, rear sight. All you do is line up your dots, equal amount of light on each side, and you put your target right there, and that's your proper sight picture. But this, these are very easy sights to use. Now Glock uses a triangle back here, a white triangle, which is just as easy to use, but the three dot system is probably used on nine out of 10 different pistols. This is what you're gonna find most common. Very common, indeed. Now these are the red dots. Uh, the thing I like about red dots over a laser sight is this looks like when you use this red dot, it looks like it's on your target. But it isn't, it's actually in the sight. Now you can use these sights in bright sunlight, doesn't matter. Uh, with a laser, you're, you're lost in the sun. Now they have different uh, dots. Uh, they're three to five MOA, which is three inches to five inches at 100 yards normally. Now uh, a lot of these sights have, uh, you can turn them down, the brightness. The lower you turn it, the smaller the dot gets. But the harder it is to see. But these are speed sights. You've seen us shoot these in the videos on the plates. With a 1022, you bring the gun up and you're automatically in line. Here, this is another style. This is an EOTech style. Now, some of these have a cross and a dot. Some of them have a circle and a cross. Some of them have just a dot. Some of them have just a circle. But this is the EOTech style. Up here, this is a diopter sight. This is like you find on the uh, uh, some of your mill serp guns. You got the rear peep. You got the front sight with the protective ears on it. This is like you see on an M1 Garand or a carbine. This is exactly what it looks like. The rear sight's adjustable for windage and elevation. A lot of times the front sight is adjustable for uh, elevation only. But this, your eye always finds the center of it. You don't even have to focus on this. You focus on your target and the sight and your, your brain will automatically center it. That's one of the things that makes diopter sights so accurate. They make them fast and accurate. The human eye is always going to find the center of that diopter. That's one thing that we were taught in training when I was in the military. We shot M16A2s with iron sights, and we were expected to make consistent hits out to even 500 yards with them. The Marine Corps shoots out to 500 yards. Um, on the diopter, your eye will always find the center, and then you practice proper trigger squeeze, breathing techniques, and make sure you have proper sight picture. Generally what you'll do is you'll draw an imaginary X through the center of the dot or center of the diopter, which your eye is always going to do that regardless. And then your front sight post should be generally in the center of that diopter. And you really get a more consistent sight picture out of diopters than you do out of a standard Mauser style sight. That's why a lot of match guns have diopter sights equipped because they are better for target shooting. Mm -hmm. And military rifles equipped with diopter sights shoot Excellent. 
Well, you got the duplex hunting reticle down here. This is what you find in a lot of your red field scopes and uh, your hunting scope. Your eye naturally picks up the heavy lines and it automatically centers here. In dim light, you can see this better than if it was just a plain crosshair like up here. Correct. But this, this centers your eye. This is, this is really like a glass diopter sight. It does. It generally yeah. forces your eye to the center of where those four black dark lines are pointing. Right. Um, very quick to pick up in the field, and that's why it's a popular hunting mm -hmm. uh, reticle. Um, what we have here is a, a pretty poor drawing, but it's a basic target scope. What a target st uh, scope is going to have is two very thin crosshairs, all right, and you're going to have a single dot in the center of a target scope. And they're meant to be very fine, precise point of aim and allow you to shoot very small, mm -hmm. fine groups, uh, which, of course, as a target scope, um, that's a good thing. You want to shoot small groups, things like that. Uh, then they have what they call a Boone and Crockett style reticle. This is a very poor drawing of it, um, but range finding scopes are going to have a series of range finding hash marks in it. Now generally a ballistic reticle style scope will generally be regulated for a certain caliber and a certain cartridge. Um, it's not uncommon to find them for 223, 308, 300 Win Mag, and with those adjustments, you know that, say, on this hash mark, you know, that's where you aim if you're shooting at, say, 150, 200 yards. This one's three, four, five, six, et cetera. It depends on the design of the scope. But generally, this is just to give you an idea. A lot of times, the Boone and Crockett's will either have hash marks to give you Kentucky windage, or they'll have mills. Moving on to mills, a mill dot scope, there's 360 degrees in a circle and mills are derived from degrees, all right? Basically, you have six degrees of elevation in a 100-yard distance. So there's a mathematical formula that you can extrapolate from, and you can determine that one mill equals one inch and like 46 thousandths worth of elevation at 100 yards. So it's really more of a mill dot is a metric adjustment. So you're looking at meters. So at, a, at 100 meters, each dot represents one inch at 100 meters. So the reason that's important is because you can extrapolate what one mil dot is at any given distance. There's a formula, and a lot of snipers use what are called sniper cards. And what they'll use on the sniper cards is they'll know that at, let's say, um, 500 yards, an average car door will be a certain height, mm -hmm. okay? What they'll determine is they will figure out in mills how high that car door is. They'll figure out how, how high the average door height is, how high the average man is. And through extrapolating those heights, you can figure out how many mills tall they are, and you can use this as a rapid form of target acquisition by knowing how far away someone is just by how many mills tall they are. Okay? Same thing for windage. You can figure out, you can dope your Kentucky windage using mills, both to the left and right, and for overhold and underhold. Uh -huh. um, mastering a mill dot scope is not an overnight thing. It's not easy, but you'll find that if you study mill dots, you can really be an excellent long range shooter on the fly with a little bit of work with these, okay? The Comblock countries have their own version of a ballistic reticle, and the <clears throat> PSL, um, 762 by 54R scope, the PSOP style scope, utilizes what's called a uh, Druganov reticle. And the way the Druganov reticle is set up is pretty similar to mill dots, except instead of using a universal measurement system like mill dots do, it uses a real world measurement system more akin to the height of an average man. The reticle over here on the left uses the height of an average man to figure out how far away they are. So what they've determined is that like if the average man is five foot four inches, I think that's the actual measurement in the Army Manual, the Red Army Manual, or the <coughs> Soviet Manual, so to speak. If an average man is five foot four inches, his silhouette standing up should fill up this whole reticle at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. And then it gets smaller as you go. It goes from two to three, four, five, all the way up to a thousand yards. Now this is not drawn to scale, but what this scale is saying that as at a thousand yards, he should a man, fill up. A man should be that height. He should be that height. 
And what that does is it allows you to figure out exactly how far away someone is just by quickly reticling, okay? Then you have an appropriate hash mark that it corresponds with that once you find that point, you got your thousand, mark, uh, thousand yard hash mark, put it on it, hold over, as long as the wind isn't blowing, you should hit them. Mm -hmm. That's the theory. <clears throat> so a Very little fast. bit more in the mill dots and the PSL style, but you know, it's definitely there, and if you understand how those reticles work, you can do some really good shooting. Well, we've got the Euro style up here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you, you will see these on a lot of the scopes like a Kals or a Swarovski. Some of the real high dollar European scopes have this type of a reticle in them. And what you do, you put your target right on top of that point, and these automatically center it for you. Mm -hmm. Now, like Eric was saying, this is a this is a, a very superior way of doing it. But this is you, with a scope like this, or a scope like uh, your hunting reticle, you have to be able to judge distance in order to use them. That's judge correct. Judge your holdover. Um, this style of reticle is also known as a three-post German reticle. Three-post German. Um, those were made uh, popular in the early Zeiss optics. <clears throat> Um, a lot of the early World War II optics that the German snipers were using uh, were this exact reticle style. And to this day, it is a very popular reticle style in Germany and in Europe, and that's why it's known as a Euro style. Um, in terms of sight picture, uh, Barry will discuss for you the halo effect. All right, now, Barry, explain to him how, what you'll get when you get a halo effect in a scope. Well, the halo effect is caused when your eye is either too far or too close. Correct. Yeah. What happens... You, when you, you get your eye relief on your scope, you get a full picture. If you're too far away from it, you'll still see the crosshairs, but you will not have a full field of view. And you will not get a consistent point of aim on the target. Right. You will not shoot good groups. You won't hit the target on the first shot. So it's always important. If you are experiencing a halo effect, you need to make sure that you've got your eye relief on the scope set up properly and that your parallax is adjusted properly and also your focal point. Um, in a future video, we're going to discuss proper scope setup uh, so you guys can get good groups at the range and make sure that you're getting out there and you're being successful on the first try. Mm. So um, that's pretty much a lot of these sight pictures in a nutshell. Um, Barry mentioned on the red dots here, um, you know, he pretty much said everything correctly. One thing I wanted to add to the red dots is that on, on red dots, like he said, the, the more dim you have the setting, the more accurate you're going to be with a red dot. Because the, 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 it reduces the diameter of the dot. As you go to the lower power, you get a smaller and smaller dot, but it's not as bright. Right. So if you're shooting squirrels or something in the woods at 20 or 30 yards, you want to turn it down to the lowest setting that you can still see. Yeah, the lowest setting that you can see without straining is what you want to, you want to go for. But the value of this side is speed. When oh, you yes. bring your gun up, you put that dot on what you want, you got it. Yep, and you're going to hit them within a foot, you know, even at 100 yards. I mean, a as a quick and rapid acquisition type scope, that's really where red dots excel. Now, another thing about a red dot, it doesn't matter if your dot's in the center. Your dot can be up here. As long as that sight is sighted in, as long as that dot is on what you're shooting, it's going to hit it. It's like a heads-up display. Uh, Especially the EOTech. The right. EOTech is actually uh, modeled after a uh, pilot's HUD. So right. it's it's the same technology on that. But there again, with this properly set up, when you bring this gun up, your eye is automatically going to be right there. But it doesn't matter if you're in an awkward position or you have to shoot a hurry, your dot can be up here. As long as the dot is on the target, it's going to hit it, as long as it's in that screen. Absolutely. Okay. Well, hopefully that covers the bases pretty well. This is uh, by no means a comprehensive list, but this should at least give you an idea of the kind of things you're going to come across with uh, different types of guns. Appreciate y'all watching. We've gotten an overwhelming amount of support from you guys. I cannot uh, thank you enough for your uh, continued support, your viewership. It means a lot to us. Uh, we appreciate you watching and hope you guys have a good day and hope you learned something today. Y'all have a good evening. Thank Bye you now. Now.